Oh, TJ. And you were doing so well. I was originally going to start this channel off with a derpy opening video talking about myself. You know what? Fuck that noise. As a feminist, and someone who has been a feminist since about age 14, when I first heard the word and learned its meaning, I can tell you from an average feminist perspective that Tumblr feminists really piss us off too. So, when you call them out, you're doing us a huge favor. See, the average feminist looks at these radicals the same way the average Christian looks at the Westboro Baptist Church. We think they're fucking nuts. And the way the average feminist sees an extremist is the same way a normal Christian views a creationist. We think they're really, really stupid. So, when you point them out, we can take up arms with you and fight back, reclaiming our movement. But, when you go out of your way to take something legitimate and... Well, it's frustrating that a real and genuine argument that you would take seriously if you hadn't found it on a feminist blog is getting run through the dirt. The first two comics you show are from a webcomic called Short Packed. It's a comic strip about a toy store and the people who work there. It was created by a toy, comic, and cartoon enthusiast. The first comic shows a black girl. She's actually one of the newest characters to the strip. She is a comic book fan who goes on forums and is often told she can't be a real fan because she's a girl. This is just art mimicking life. Walkie, the artist, is only putting up what he sees all the time in the comic book industry and fandom. For the record, he's actually read the Teen Titan comics as opposed to you who just did a cursory Wikipedia lookup to prove a point. No better than a creationist using the first law of thermodynamics to disprove evolution without even knowing what the other two laws are. It was a vapid argument, and you're proud of not knowing what you're talking about. The second comic shows Amber, my personal favorite character. She's a shy character who came into her own after years of trying. What I like about this specific comic page is that she's right. Maybe not on a every woman ever believes this level, but more on a biological level. Studies have shown women tend to prefer less masculine men the majority of the time as long-term partners. It's only when women are ovulating that women prefer these pumped-up supermen that guys seem to think we want. As with both genders, of course, a healthy body is always desired. That's pure instinct and makes absolute sense on each side. But women don't want ultramen, except for one or two days of the month, when the baby-making hormones are running rampant. Which brings me to the next part. Did, did you look up false equivalents? Because that's what your very next argument is. And the beautiful male picture you chose is what a woman might on average find attractive, not the actual male power fantasy that is being spoken of. Anyway. You kind of ruin your own argument. What is a woman to you who does not shave her armpits? She's gross. She's dirty. She's unattractive. Not just to her boyfriend, but to the entire male population. So you are a neckbeard to one woman, whereas beards have been, and continue to be, socially accepted on a level not shaving your armpits will never reach. Of course, personal preference is a huge issue in that one statement. And you are doing exactly what you said Amber was doing in her blatant statement about what women prefer. No, it is not okay for women to objectify and sexualize men any more than it's okay to objectify and sexualize women. But what you're missing is the majority of the female gaze is based on personality. Not just how big his balls are. Physical attraction is important. No one will deny that. But obsessing about it the way comics do with half-naked women and overjacked men is the male approach that feminists are trying to point out. You can't be mad about the way males are shown when it's from the male perspective and then blame it on feminists and women in general. I don't really want to talk about the other two comics, mostly because I don't have any background information on them. I do have personal feelings, and for the most part, that doesn't make a very compelling argument. The superhero comic I find funny, mostly because I can imagine how ridiculous it is to have your boobs flopping in the wind. Wonder Woman playing with dolls made me laugh, since she's usually seen as the first feminist superhero anyway. And the Halloween costume, I sympathize with. 
I have a lot of costumes I like to wear, but I usually have two extremes of each. Either I get to be a super slut or a super dork. There really is no in-between for women's costumes, especially the very specific ones of vampires or witch. And when they do exist, they aren't even in my size, which is another rent for another time.